If you thought hacking food was fun, wait till we start hacking dessert and booze. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, back to hack some more food with you. But this time, we're not doing plain old traditional food. This time, we're hacking dessert and booze. So I am so excited to add a new segment to my channel, and we're going to not just share food hacks throughout the month, but we're also going to share dessert and booze. So my girlfriend, Anchor Amber, here on YouTube found this book, of course, at the Dollar Tree, the same place that I found my food hack book. It's by the same author, Peggy Wang, so I'll make sure to link this book below like I do the food hack book in case you guys want to check it out on Amazon. Obviously, it's not as cheap as the Dollar Tree, but if you're still interested in the book, it will be linked below. But there are so many great recipes in here, you guys, so I cannot wait to start sharing them with you but hold the phone. For those of you who are like, eh, I don't really do the drinking game, so maybe this segment won't be for me, the bartender in me will not allow you to skip out. So I'm going to do my own little twist and spin on things, and I'm gonna make sure to share a non-alcoholic version of these drinks so you can drink alongside of us as well without the alcohol content. So I was actually going to share this video on Friday, being that I do Food Hack Friday. I thought I would do Food Hack Friday Friday and then every other Friday I would share the dessert and booze one. But my girlfriend Heather Larson wrote me here when I had mentioned in my Dollar Tree video that I was going to share this and she was like, yo, hold the phone. Next Friday is Black Friday. It's the day after Thanksgiving and you're going to share something Apple. Like after Thanksgiving, the Apple ship has sailed and we're all on to the winter flavor. So I was like, you know what? You're 100% right let's share apples early. So I have two apple hacks to share with you, one apple booze hack and one apple dessert hack, and this way you guys can use them on Thanksgiving if you would like because these are perfectly suited. So let me take you down to my counter. I'm gonna show you apple pie in a glass, alcoholic and non-alcoholic, and then we're also going to do bite-sized handheld apple pies. So here are the ingredients that we are going to need to make both recipes. So we have our booze hack, which is an apple pie in a glass. And then that's what we need to make our dessert hack, which is these really small individual hand pies. So let's take a look at our new book. So this is our dessert and booze hacks book, of course, by Peggy Wang, again, from the Dollar Tree. So we have a very long list here of dessert hacks and then we have our booze hacks here on the other side not as many booze hacks but still nonetheless quite a few yummy ones so I'm excited to dive into those and we are starting with apple pie in a glass which is page 65 so when we go to the back page it says apple pie in a glass simultaneously refreshing and heartwarming this deceptively simple two ingredient cocktail tastes just like Christmas on ice so pour one shot of vanilla vodka and one cup of apple cider into a glass filled with ice and serve. So here are my options for you guys in case we want to do a non-alcoholic version or if you even want to go sparkling or non-sparkling. I don't know. I had a variety of ideas. So I had this French vanilla vodka on hand. This is just a Georgie or Giorgio, whatever brand. I usually do more knockoff brands when you're doing mixed drinks. You want want a better quality vodka when you're drinking it on the rocks. So we have the apple cider from the Dollar Tree, or this is the sparkling apple cider that I got from Aldi's. So you can just do the vodka and the apple cider from Dollar Tree and do a non-carbonated version, or you can pour it with the sparkling apple cider and do a sparkling version. Now here is vanilla Starbucks coffee syrup. They sell this by the coffee section. I got this right in Walmart, came with the pump top and everything. It's meant for coffee, but you can use that in the apple cider to give you that vanilla flavor without the content of the alcohol. So I think that that's a good solution. You could do that in either apple cider, whether it be the sparkling or the regular. And if you want, 
to do the regular apple cider but then add a different version of sparkling you can just go with ginger ale or maybe sprite like if you don't have that sparkling apple cider on hand you can just do regular apple cider and add the ginger ale or the sprite and that would still give you that fizzy combination and you guys would have all the flavors of this drink but two ingredients is pretty darn good when we're making a cocktail and I figured we'd start with this first because you guys saw my last baking job so I'm thinking I'm going to need a cocktail to work through those apple pies so I did a little trick I put my cup with ice and then I put half of my drink of apple cider and then I poured that french vanilla vodka in notice no measuring for me I don't like to measure and then I poured the apple cider on top of it it's almost like helping it mix through without stirring normally I would do this in a tumbler and then pour it back in but I was trying to be quick today so I just did a little swoosh around in the glass but being that I layered it it was more than enough mixing and now we were ready to go to make our apple pies so here's what we need to make our apple pies it is on page 17 and it says bite size apple pies so I'm really excited about making this this is so interesting to me like how these little things all end up working out so this says these pack in all the apple pie flavor you want without the trouble of making a whole pie they're like cinnamony apples wrapped in a cozy little blanket and they're tiny so you can control your portions ha ha yeah right so here's what we're going to need and the instructions in case you guys want to screenshot that and do it for yourself so we just need a little flour to do the dusting of the rolling out of the dough we need some cinnamon three tablespoons of butter that needs to be melted we'll melt that in just a second it says you only need two apples here but I do have three just because I am going to use my apple slicer and sometimes the smaller apples like these honey crisp ones or that gala apple which is that one right there sometimes it just makes too little of a slice so I thought maybe if I needed it I would just double up you could see that the slices are pretty big those wedges so on that little slicer so I just wanted to make sure the apple was good enough size to get a good enough apple piece for inside of the dough so here are your two pie crusts and then we also needed sugar so now we're just going to start off by preheating the oven to 425 degrees and then we're going to line a baking sheet with parchment paper or wax paper this is just wax paper that actually Daryl gets for me at the restaurant it's like full slices it works out perfect so now we're gonna cut our apples and to be honest these worked out perfect especially for that bite size theory I did end up only cutting two I love this little apple slicer and it is super cheap on Amazon so I'll link it below if you guys want to check it out it's just a couple of bucks but it makes slicing apples super easy especially when I'm doing it for the kids like with peanut butter and raisins or something it just takes the core right out and then boom you have your apple pieces so I have my 16 pieces of apple in the bowl ready to go and now we're going to get ready to make our mixture so we need a half a cup of sugar and then one teaspoon of cinnamon and we're gonna mix that together and it wants us to separate some because we're gonna use some on the inside of the dough we're rolling out and then some is going to be a topping right before we bake them in the oven so I did take the measuring cup and just pour a little bit in there to save for the sprinkling on top and then that's what we're left over with to put on this dough so I just put like one tablespoon of flour on my countertop and just kind of dusted it along so that we can roll out these pie sheets now I did my best with the rolling pin but it wanted you to roll it out into a square form again I'm not a baker here like even rolling out dough is not my thing but these are meant for pies obviously that's why you're buying a pie thing a pie dough and so they're more round in shape so it was a little hard to get it square but I did the best I could to match the size and then I went and melted that butter and then we coated that whole inside of the dough with the butter and then this way I cut the strips first and then put the cinnamon and sugar on and next time I did it the other way just to see what would work out best and I haven't really seen that one worked out better than the other but I did use a pizza cutter just to get myself eight strips and then I came in with that cinnamon and sugar mixture and generously covered everything with that you could just smell that this was already going to smell 
and taste like that apple pie feeling that you were going to get because I could smell the apples that I cut and then the cinnamon and sugar and the melted butter. And so that was it. You just grabbed a one piece of apple and you put it in that strip and you just rolled it up. I did put it on the parchment paper seam side down so it didn't open when it baked. And I just went ahead and rolled up the first set of eight and then did the same thing with the next set of eight. So here they are all done and laid out on the sheet pan. I did just clean my workstation first before I put my sheet pan down. And then I used the rest of the melted butter and I coated all 16 little apple slices with the rest of the melted butter. And then I'm gonna come back in with that cinnamon and sugar that we put off to the side. And I'm going to sprinkle it all on top. This way it's cinnamony and sugary all the way through. So then I placed them in that 425 degree oven for 15 minutes. That was the perfect amount of time. It said 15 to 17, but 15 right on the nose in my oven worked out perfect. And look at these things like the cinnamon and the sugar and the apple almost made like a caramelization. They were so delicious. I love how they put that little joke about they're so small so you can control your portions. And then they put ha ha yeah right. Cause it was so, so good when it was coming out. They were like hot and flaky that Daryl and I were afraid that I wasn't even going to have enough to make the plate look full before I got a chance to finish filming the video. They were so delicious and they actually reminded me a lot of my mom's arugula recipe. She makes these arugulas with cinnamon and sugar and raisins. I'm actually gonna share that for my kickoff to a Vlogmas since December 1st is a Saturday. That would be a saute Saturday for me. So I'm gonna share my mom's recipe with you, but biting into this, the outside, that cinnamon and sugar flaky pastry dough gave the essence of that arugula that my mom makes and then the apple inside like this was so delicious I ended up going back and finishing off that apple cider and making another glass this is my second cup it was just so refreshing you guys like the vanilla vodka was just enough with the sparkling apple cider I never even used the regular apple cider because I just did the sparkling and it was so good so if you guys are excited about this new segment on my channel dessert and booze hacks make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you guys are new here make sure to hit that subscribe button i'm going to post one of these dessert and booze hacks every month here on the channel if you try any of these recipes please come back and comment down below if i don't see you guys back before thanksgiving thank you so much for watching and i hope you guys have a great holiday i love you so much and i'll see you guys all in the next video.